I want to welcome our father. Your, your wish, sir. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Looking at our father, you know, is our grandfather. I, I, don't, I'm not, I will not stand here as a, as a boy and begin to introduce Grandpa, let let Grandpa talk. Let's hear. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. I am Evangelist C.S. Up the Grove from the United States of America, and I want to thank God for the privilege of being here in Africa for the first time. A global evangelist, revivalist, author, renowned minister of God, and one of God's generals, C.S. Up the Grove. For 68 years, he has been preaching the gospel all over the world. Born into a humble family in Florida, USA, the second youngest of 21 siblings, he had discovered the direction of his calling from the tender age of 15. Since that time, he has traveled the world with a message of hope and salvation, that Jesus Christ is the healer and deliverer to hundreds of thousands around the globe. During his ministry, countless people have come to the knowledge of God's saving grace through the anointing of God upon his life. Numerous people have been touched, healed, delivered, and blessed through the powerful ministry God has given him. Now 83, he is still active in the ministry and is dedicated to reaching as many souls for Christ as he can. Evangelist C.S. Up the Grove has also received various awards. At the age of 80, he received an award in honor, appreciation, and celebration of his commitment, covenant, and excellence. Respected for his contribution to the body of Christ, for his faithfulness to his calling, Evangelist C.S. Up the Grove has been recognized, honored, and presented with this award. God's General. In commemoration of his 80 years in kingdom service, and his dedication, he was given the Living Legend Award. When you do what God has put in your heart to do, you will make a difference in your world. God's General C.S. Up the Grove is truly one with a difference. This is Evangelist C.S. Up the Grove, and my biggest advice to you is to keep watching Emmanuel TV. God will bless you for that. Amen. Uh, you know, I knew William Branham. I knew Jack Coe. I knew Oral Roberts. I knew these men. I go all the way back to the Voice of Healing days. And, and I knew all of the signs, the wonders. And I've been in their services, and I've rejoiced. I've been with Catherine Kuhlman. I've seen so many. But listen, everything that I'm seeing in the ministry right now of, of Prophet Joshua supersedes anything that I have seen under those ministries. It, it's a greater measure, and it's exactly what Brother Allen said would happen. Emmanuel. I want to praise God for this privilege. I'm 83 years of age. <clears throat> Been married 61 years to the same wife. Four children, two boys and two girls, and my oldest girl is here with me, Brenda. And I'm walking on holy ground. <clears throat> Many years ago, when I was working with great men of God like A.A. A. Allen, William Branham, Oral Roberts, R.W. Schambach, great men of the past, and God gave me an opportunity to stand on their shoulders. And I was riding one day in the automobile with A.A. A. Allen. And he looked over at me and he said, Brother Up the Grove, I may not be living when this comes to pass but I believe you will. 
and he began to describe this place. He began to talk about a man that would walk out under the anointing and the power of the Almighty God. He further described all of the miracles that I have witnessed since I have been here. On Thursday, when the wise men began to minister, I couldn't help but sit there and weep because of the fulfillment of the prophecy that the man of God had given me. A. A. Allen said, Brother Up the Grove, there will be a multitude of people from all over the world that will hear simultaneously. And this was before, many years before, we have the technology that we have now. There was no internet. There was nothing like we know now in the way of modern technology. And when he further began to tell me about the anointing and the power that was going to come upon such men as Prophet T.B. Joshua, <clears throat> in the middle 60s, 1966, he began to describe to me the mannerism in which the spirit of the Lord would fall. And when I walked in this place and the spirit of the living God witnessed to me and said, you are walking on holy ground. <laughs> Brother Allen furthermore said to me, he said, Brother Up the Grove, when you see this begin to happen, know that the time is near to the making up of the bride without spot and without wrinkle. When the man of God told me personally as I would move in the spiritual realm and see these things come to pass, that God would make provision for me to be there and to see it for myself. And I want to thank God for the privilege of the way being made for me to be in this place right now. And ever since I've been here, uh, I remembered when I first saw on Emmanuel television this man of God as he began to move in supernatural realms saw the prophecies that came to pass. Make no mistake about it. You're living in the presence of a mighty prophet sent from God. God said to me, as I was watching this man on a manual television, he said, this is my prophet. And he said, I am establishing around the world 12 appointed apostles and prophets. And God said to me, T.B. Joshua, will be one of the 12 prophets. That God will establish around the entire world. When God told me that, I said, oh Lord, make a way for me. <laughs> I wanna be there. And then a telephone call was made and I'll never forget how elated I was 
when they came and said, the prophet said, you're to come to Nigeria. And now that I am in Nigeria, I'm beginning to see and remember the things that the prophet told me about so many years ago. When I was 29 years old, my hair was blonde. And I went on a 21 day fast. And in that fast, God began to talk to me about the last days and the ministries of the last times. I found myself under a big oak tree in the middle of that fast. And a bright light began to shine through that oak tree. And as the light came closer and closer, shimmers of light coming through the oak tree formed into an angel of God about 12 feet tall. When I saw this awesome, beautiful thing from heaven, I fell face forward. I fainted. The first thing I remember was a gentle touch on the top of my blonde hair when I was 29. And a voice said, fear not. Now, when an angel says, fear not, the fear is gone. And I found myself standing erect, looking up into the eyes of this beautiful angel. His voice was as the voice of many waters. His eyes were like flames of fire, much like the description in Revelation. He said, my son, the Father sends this message. Thou shalt go forth, and I will go before thee. I will direct thy path. I will make a way where there seemeth not to be a way. I, the Lord, will go before thee, and there will be a special anointing in your right hand. You will see signs, wonders, and miracles like never before. And before the angel was through talking, all of a sudden I noticed that I was not looking up at him any longer. I was face to face with this beautiful angel. I didn't understand it. But when he finished giving me the message, he raised his hand and left much like he came back through the big oak tree and the shimmering lights and left and went back to heaven. When I looked down, my feet were not on the ground. I had risen to the height of the angel. And then slowly, I came back down to the earth. In a few short days, my hair changed to the color that you see right now. And then when the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me about what he uses to prove that he has power. I said, Lord, tell me more. What do you use to prove that you have power? And when I saw Prophet T.B. Joshua using water, I said, that's one of them. I said, God can use water. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then God spoke to me. He said, I can use a stick in the hands of a man called Shamgar. 600 Philistines were slain with nothing more than an ox goad. That's just a, a stick that he used to control the oxen. And he slew 600 Philistines. God said, I can use a stone. And he used a stone in the sling of David to slay a giant. God used the stone underneath the head of the prophet of God that had a vision and angels ascending and descending all the way to heaven. And then 
God said, I can use less than that. I can use nothing more than a dried up bone. So God took a man that had been slain on the battlefield and he was thrown in on the grave of Elisha. And when his dead body touched the dried up bones of Elisha, he sprang to life again. <clears throat> if anyone asks you, what does God use to prove that he has power? You tell them that I said, God uses sticks and stones and dead men's bones. So if God can use sticks and stones and dead men's bones to prove that he has power, he can use me and he can use you. <clears throat> One man formed nothing more than a shadow and the shadow touched the sick and the sick was healed. One man just stretched forth his hand and the spoken word healed the sick. A great man of stature in the word of God came to Jesus and he said, my servant lieth home sick unto death. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. He said, no, master, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof, but speak the word only. There is power in the spoken word. I call that spoken word faith. One of the greatest kind of faiths that God uses, and I love this, is touching faith. One woman that had an issue of blood, no help until she said within herself, the answer to your problems could be within yourself. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. I call that touching faith. Will you say touching faith? But the greatest faith that I have ever become acquainted with comes from Hebrews 11 and 1. The Bible said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I call it now faith. Yeah. Most of you are here today because you need a miracle now. How many need a miracle now? Now faith. When prophet Joshua walked out here and God shows him that people need miracles now. They need deliverance now. Haya. Glory. I prayed and I asked God, I said, Lord, reveal to me, please, what can I do to help your people who need help so desperately? Thank God for men like Prophet Joshua that God uses to help millions become liberated. Please hear this little story, it will bless you. There was a pilot of an airplane. He was a young Christian pilot. They were stationed overseas near a large river that is called Snake River. The reason they called it Snake River was because there were so many snakes of every kind in that river. 
And one day the sirens blew and the young pilot knew he had to run, jump in his aircraft and meet the enemy. But when he started to get into the airplane, there was a long boa constrictor laying in the path. He said, Snake, I don't have time for you now. And he jumped over the snake, jumped into the cockpit, and took off. But when the plane became airborne, he couldn't retract his landing gear. That is, the wheels would not come back up into position. And he said, that snake has wound itself up in those wheels and I can't retract them. Therefore, I won't be able to go fast enough to repel the enemy that's coming. So he said, God, I need a miracle now. He was about to manifest now faith. Everybody say, now faith. Now faith. Now, right, now. right now. He said, Lord, help me now. And then he remembered immediately a story. His father had him in the woods when he was only 12 years old. And his father said, son, what do you see? He said, dad, there's trees everywhere. He said, look higher, son. Way up on top of the mountain, what do you see? He said, there's no trees growing on top of the mountain. Son, do you know why? No, Dad, I don't know why. He said, because trees have to have oxygen to live. He said, when the air gets too thin, trees will die. He said, now, more than that, it's interesting to note that when you get above that tree line, even snakes can't live because they have to have oxygen. He said, thank you, Dad. And he pulled back on the stick and he got above the snake line and the snake fell out dead. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and I feel his anointing now. And I feel the glory all around me. The Lord said, my people, are living below the snake line. My people need to get above the snake line. Anything below the snake line, I can tell you what they are. Worry below the snake line. Frustration, aggravation, irritation, aches, pains, trouble, sorrow, tears, fears, discontentment, all kinds of problems when you're living below the snake line. But if you will pray and the Holy Spirit of God will come upon you, you will rise up above the snake line. We call it the Shekinah glory realm. And what I have felt from the time I have stepped into this place was God's Shekinah glory. Thank God, Prophet T.B. Joshua is living above the snake line. Thank God he is teaching me and you how to live above the snake line. I want to mention one more thing about the snake line. Anything between you and God is your God. I will repeat that. Anything between you and God is your God. But when you get into the glory realm, everybody say glory realm. Glory realm. When you get into the glory realm, Everything else is forgiven. And as the prophet told us this morning, you are free. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when you, are, ha, when you are free and the glory and the presence of the almighty God is all around you and all over you, you get above 
the snake line and live in his glory. How many? <clears throat> ah. This will make an old man shout. Hallelujah. This will make a sick man get well. This will make somebody bound be free. Simply by getting above that snake line. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise when God made it possible for me to come see the prophet, he spoke to me to bring something with me to put into the hands of the prophet. And just before I left to come here, the Lord said, write something down. I'm going to give you a prophecy, and you can find it for me here. And I wrote this to the prophet before getting on the plane. Behold, my son, I speak to you in this very hour. A door will be opened to you like never before. Amen. Thou hast asked, and I have heard thy prayer. I have begun to prepare dignitaries from around the world to accept thy vision. From this very hour, you are appointed as one of the 12 prophets that I will establish around the world to, to usher in the bride of Christ without spot or wrinkle. Thou hast truly followed the example of my own son. When you bless the sick and the poor and you have done it, then unto me. I will restore everything that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar and the locust hath eaten away, even to the bark of the tree. You will see my hand move not many days hence. You are my end time messenger an appointed prophet for this hour to usher in the bride of my son, thus saith the Lord God. This was written and prophesied before I arrived and before some of the prophecies came to pass that the prophet prophesied after I got here. I thank God I'm walking on holy ground. <clears throat> the Lord said, furthermore, I want you to give to my prophet some pictures that was made in Miracle Valley, Arizona, which was the home of the late, great A.A. A. Allen. I'm holding before me his offices in 1966 and the beautiful mountains of Miracle Valley, Arizona. And then another picture of Brother Allen's Miracle magazine that he published in 1964. This is me on this side. My sister is in the middle and my wife is on this end. We were in the A.A. A. Allen Great Healing Tent Revival, a tent that was larger than a football field and about the size of this sanctuary that we're in now. And my sister had a twisted back from polio, one hip higher than the other. And the man of God, A.A. A. Allen, laid his hand on her. She fell in the sawdust and she stood up as straight as I am. And that's why that picture and that story was in that magazine. Here is a picture of Brother A.A. A. Allen at Christmas time in 1966. And uh, that is his sister standing there. And this is Brother Up the Grove here with the white coat. And my wife is next to me. 
and Brother Allen enjoying the Christmas dinner. And the other picture that goes along with that is one of the gifts that Brother Allen received. He was receiving a brand new suitcase to keep traveling for Jesus, and he did as long as he lived. Now, I'll show you a picture that you won't hardly believe. Thank you. This is me at Miracle Valley when I'm 38 years old and I'm on Brother Allen's horse. This is A.A. Allen's horse in Miracle Valley, and that's me on the horse. Soon after I left the valley, I felt the anointing so great in my life until I was preaching in Detroit, Michigan, where I went for a two weeks revival that lasted three and one half years. And in the middle of that revival, while I was preaching, someone took a picture and I was preaching on Elijah and the whirlwind of fire that took him up to meet the chariot. And here is a picture of me and the whirlwind of fire actually surrounding me and I felt like I was going to lift off that stage. And this was in Detroit, Michigan, 1968. To show you, God can use anybody, anywhere, at any time that will pay the price to get above the snake line. <clears throat> this is a personal letter that I received from Brother A. A. Allen back in 1965 when he was in the Philippine Islands inviting me to come and be pastor of the Miracle Valley Church. And I have something very special in my hand that I'm going to present to the prophet in just a moment. And he's coming now. <laughs> this is something that I've treasured for a long time. As I told you back in 1965, 66, 67, there was nothing ever heard of like a computer or modern technology. Everything had to be done the hard way. So Brother Allen went out and had a rubber stamp made with his name on it. This is Brother Allen's personal stamp, rubber stamp. His name is inscribed on here, and they made a rubber stamp just like his signature. And I have watched this man of God. He felt to answer every letter personally. Thousands of letters came in. And Pastor, I can see him yet reading those letters and stamping with this very stamp, letter after letter after letter after letter. And when it was presented, ha, whew, I can feel it now. When it was presented to me, I said, the spirit of the Lord is still in that stamp. God can use anything. I told you, he used sticks, stones, dead men's bones. He uses water. He uses shadows. And God used this stamp in the hands of A.A. A. Allen. And when it was passed to me, I treasured this and I kept it. My children said, leave it to us, Dad. I said, no, this is not for the inheritance of the children. This is to pass on to another prophet of God. So Bishop, it is my pleasure to present to you this stamp. God bless you. <laughs> and I think there's only one, one more thing. Uh, uh, this is Brother Allen's obituary at his funeral and everything in there concerning his passing. He really died too young. He was only 59 years old, 59. But he did great works while he was yet alive. 
But I want to thank God this man is not dead. He's alive. And the God within him is very alive. And the works that you see now is just the beginning of what you will see. I promise you. I'm chai. <laughs> you have listened to our grandpa. Uh, uh, we have read so much about uh, A. Allen, God General, son of the great in the century. Those who humble themselves under Jesus Christ have taken the best, best source to secure themselves. All this can only be achieved when we humble ourselves under Jesus for supervision and victory because it is his ways that establishes it is his way that builds thank you very much <laughs>